Okay, so let's continue our discussion of like how can we use this probability table. Okay, so you might have also been noticing that this table looks really familiar. Uh, it's very reminiscent of our frequency tables or like how often when like from section from earlier sections about how often did one of these outcomes occur. And now when we did the frequency table, that was with empirical data, where we actually we collected the data, we did the counts, we figured out the proportions, and then we were able to uh, figure out like the relative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency. Okay, this is similar, only this time with these distributions, we are using basically like the theoretical probabilities. We're saying instead of rolling a dice a whole bunch of times and then building some frequency table, we're saying we already know what the probability of rolling any one of these numbers, and we're just going to use it at kind of the theoretical level instead of at the empirical level. Uh, so anyways, this was, that is kind of the idea of this probability table, where once again, this little x are our outcomes, and so we have all of these possible outcomes of our random event. And remember, let me write this out, that x is equal to our random event. All right, so for this scenario, uh, we, our random event is our dice roll. Little, so that's our dice roll is capital X, and little x is all of our possible outcomes. And so up here I've written kind of like, this is the PMF, remember that stands for probability mass function. And this probability statement is the definition of that probability mass function. And then we've got all of the possible values uh, for those probabilities. Okay, so similarly as we were able to uh, do the relative frequency with the frequency tables, we can also do what's synonymous with that cumulative relative frequency. And this is called a what's called a CDF and that stands for cumulative cumulative distribution function okay but it's going to fulfill the same role as that idea of the cumulative relative frequency all right, so it's going to have a probability statement as well, and it's the probability that the discrete random variable is less than or equal to a specific member of the support or a specific outcome. Okay, so this is the exact same idea. When we sum, so this is going to be the sum of, any, of the probability of an event and everything before it. Um, and at the very end, it's going to equal the probability of 1. Okay, so when we start, we take what's the probability of rolling a 1 or less. Well, there's nothing less than a 1, so it's just going to be 1 over 6. For 2, it's going to be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. And so we've got 2 over 6. Because the next one's going to be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. You kind of get the idea. 3 over 6. Um, so instead of adding like this, too, you can just take the probability of the event and everything before it, which is this probability. So 1, 6 plus 3, 6 gives us 4, 6. And we get 1, 6 plus 4, 6 is our 5, 6. And at the end, we get the value of 1. So you know that you'll have done your cumulative distribution function correctly if it sums up to the value 1 at the very last member of the support. Now, let's suppose that we added one extra value on here. So let's say we added on the value 7 to our support as another outcome. Well, we can put it on there, but remember, if we put in a member of the support, it needs a probability. The probability needs to be somewhere between 0 and 1 inclusive. All right, so a regular six-sided dice, uh, well, that probability of success is, in fact, a 0 out of 6. It doesn't happen. Okay, so let's see if it doesn't mess up our CDF. Well, if we take the probability of getting that 7 plus everything before it, we still get the number 1. So you can have members of the support that equal 0, uh, but they're kind of useless. They don't really do anything, uh, and so we don't need them. But if they are there, they do need to have a probability. Uh, it should be 0 uh, if they don't exist within the sample space. And then when you add them up in the CDF, it still just kind of comes out to 1. Okay, 
So that is how we kind of handle uh, this idea of our taking our sample space and instead of using kind of like the other probability tools that we use, this is another way that we can kind of organize that information. Uh, but it doesn't just have to be with things like this. Uh, we could have a totally different uh, sample space. So let's just say that we had a weird dice and on our weird dice, instead of having just the numbers of, you know, one through uh, six, maybe it goes one, two, three, and then instead of four, five, and six, let's suppose that it went zero, zero, zero. Okay, so just a little bit different. Uh, well, we can, we can take care of this. Our new probability tables can handle a scenario like this. So I'm going to leave this one up here. We'll call this just like the standard dice one. And over here, we're going to use uh, our new scenario. And you know what? Just so that we don't get too confused, let's put these numbers back up as four, five, six. We'll leave that sample space alone, and we'll build a whole other one over here. So we've got our sample space, and we'll even put it on order. Zero, 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 one, two, and three. Okay, well, well we, can, we can handle this. Let's go ahead and just start off by building our table and starting off with our outcomes or our support. Well, here we've got zero, we've got one, we've got two, and we've got three. So zero is, is a possible outcome. The fact that it shows up multiple times will handle in just a little bit, but these are all of my possible values that could happen from my outcome. Okay, so let's look at our PMF. So let's put up the probability that our random variable, or this weird dice roll, is going to equal a specific member of the support. Okay, so now what's the probability that we, in fact, roll a zero? Well, it's different this time. We gotta go back to our um, definitions of a probability. So remember from earlier, the probability of any event is equal to the number of outcomes in the event A divided by the number of outcomes in our sample space. So we're just going, we're falling right back to this definition. Well, this probability would be one, two, three for rolling a zero out of our six. So three divided by six, the one is a now one divided by six, two is a one divided by six, and the three is a one divided by six. Okay, so let's continue on our way and let's now do our CDF, our cumulative distribution function. And this is going to be the probability of our random variable being less than or equal to a specific member of the support. Remember, once still, this X, capital X, the one with the weird tails on it, is a random event. That random event is the dice roll. And the dice roll, we're saying, what's the probability that the dice roll is less than or equal to any specific outcome? Okay, so the first one, what's the probability of being less than or equal to zero? Well, there's nothing less than zero, so it's just going to be three divided by six less than or equal to one is going to be the sum of the probabilities of one and zero, which give us four sixths. Next one down, five sixths. And the last one is one six plus five six is six six, which is one. So did we break any of the rules? And we're like, no. Uh, we have all possible outcomes from our specific scenario. That's our support. Every member of the support has a probability, and the probabilities are all between 0 and 1 inclusive. And the sum of the CDF sums up to 1. So it looks like that, uh, that we are, in fact, good. So you'll see these things written as you know shorthand sometimes. This last one as the cumulative distribution function as the CDF. The middle column, just as said over there, is our PMF, probability mass function, and the first one is our outcomes or our support. Okay, so we've just added on just a little bit uh, onto kind of what we are calling our probability tables. 
and we see that they are very similar to our frequency tables. The frequency tables were built from like empirical data, from actually going and gathering data. And these tables instead are built from our theoretical uh, probabilities. And we will be able to take these tables and be able to ask many of the same questions that we were asking with our frequency tables. Such as, like, what's the probability that we roll at least uh, a two with this dice? And we could be like, okay, so that means, let's just write it out real quick. This is a great question. So over here, what is the probability of the discrete random variable being greater than or equal to two? So that's the same thing as saying at least two. Okay, well, we can't just read it from over here. The CDF is close, but look, this says less than or equal to x, and this one says greater than or equal to the value of two. Okay, well, we know what our event is, or we can kind of circle it over in the outcome. We know that it's the twos or the threes. So there's a couple of ways that we could do it. We could do one-sixth plus one-sixth, right? That would be the sum of the probability of two plus the probability of three, which would give us this guy. Thumbs up, that would work. Or what we could also do is we can also instead take, so look if I circle up this guy. Remember the ideas of complements that we were working with before? Well, we could take this idea of a complement, where we could say 1 minus the probability of everything else. Well, what's handy is we can now go and look and say, well, I know what the probability of everything else is. It is 1 minus this guy right here. So I can do 1 minus 4 sixths. And notice how both of these methods produce the same answer of 2 6. So what's the probability of being greater than or equal to 2? So we can use this table to answer, like if we're rolling a dice, uh, with this specific dice, we could answer this question. Similarly, let's come over here, let's do the exact same thing. What is the probability of our dice roll being greater than or equal to 2? Okay, so here we could once again look at, we could circle our event that we're actually interested in. So that would be three or greater, or sorry, two or greater, just like we saw over here, two or greater. So we can circle these guys. Okay, there's a couple of ways that we could do it. We could sum up each and every one of those, one six plus one six plus one six plus one six. We could do that, or we could use the ideas of a complement. One minus the probability of everything before it. And I'm going to use that one, because it's a little bit simpler. And that's going to give me five, six. So the probability of rolling a dice, like this, is five, six. Super handy, uh, and we can, uh, we can figure, this, um, figure this out with our probability uh, mass functions, our cumulative distribution functions, and being able to kind of circle like what exactly are we interested in. So anyhow, this is a primer and we're going to continue and expand upon these ideas uh, within our discrete random variables.